couple of months ago, I purchased myself a 4-inch Maxitov Cassegrain telescope from Skywatcher. And even though I enjoy it very much, there is one thing that I felt could be better right from the moment I start using it. Here I don't mean that the telescope could be bigger or that it needs a go-to mount. It's sort of an upgrade one can make to the telescope to improve the views of the night sky. I'm talking about the supplied Skywatcher mirror diagonal at the back of the optical tube. So hit that like button and subscribe and let's see together what's a suitable upgrade for this diagonal and why it might need an upgrade in the first place. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BD Observatory. In today's video, we are going to take a deeper look at diagonals, understanding how they work and also comparing a mirror diagonal from Skywatcher to a prism diagonal from Bader. Diagonals are important pieces of equipment that are used to reflect or refract the light captured by the telescope by a certain angle before it reaches the eyepiece. For visual astronomical observations, diagonals are typically used in combinations with refractors and Cassegrain telescopes such as SETs and MAX in order to make it more convenient and comfortable to observe the night sky. Because a diagonal represents an additional element in the optical chain, it is very important that its quality is on par with that of the telescope and the eyepiece used for observations. Otherwise, it will be the weakest link ensuring that all the other components won't reach their maximum potential. For example, if the objective lens of a top-tier refractor will refract the captured light almost perfectly, the image will suffer a significant downgrade once it reaches the support diagonal, before it gets to the eyepiece and your eye. And I had exactly this type of situation with my 4-inch Mac. While the supplied Skywatcher mirror diagonal is decent and it does its job well enough, I always felt like it was the weakest link in my setup. This is because there was always some amount of light scattering visible when observing bright targets like the Moon, Venus and Jupiter, which led to a dip in contrast and brightness when compared to the views without this mirror diagonal. So a couple of weeks ago, I decided to upgrade it. This was easier said than done because there are a lot of options out there to choose from, all with their strengths and weaknesses. So let's first take a look at the two major types of diagonals. On one hand, you have diagonals that have a mirror that reflects the light, like the Skywatcher I was using. And on the other hand, there are diagonals that use a prism to refract the incoming light. Mirror diagonals, also called star diagonals, include a mirror set at 45 degrees in order to reflect the image produced by the telescope by 90 degrees. They produce an image that is vertically oriented correctly, but is flipped horizontally. There are also mirror diagonals with angle values lower than 90 degrees, like 45 or 60 degrees. The main advantages of mirror diagonals are the lower costs compared to other type of diagonals and color accuracy if the applied coating is good enough, which is also its biggest drawback. You see, if the coating isn't perfect, which is often the case, then you get unwanted light scattering, which in turn reduces contrast and brightness. On top of this, the reflective coating is typically soft and scratches easily, which poses a problem when you want to clean it. This coating also doesn't age very well because it oxidizes in contact with the air and moisture, losing its positive attributes in time. 
In order to overcome this aging problem, manufacturers came up with dielectric mirrors, which are also better at minimizing light scattering and offering near-perfect reflectivity. However, they also cost significantly more. A premium dielectric mirror diagonal like the Everbright series from Teleview will set you back three to five hundred bucks. These type of diagonals are however the preferred choice for fast refractors. Not wanting to spend a ton of money on a mirror diagonal, I set to solving the light scattering problem by looking over to prism diagonals. This would in theory also deliver me improved brightness and contrast when observing the night sky. Prism diagonals are the second category of diagonals you can buy. They can employ a simple prism, a pentaprism or an Amici prism to refract the light from the telescope at a certain angle, usually 90 degrees. Because prism diagonals don't need a reflective metallic surface that could reflect the light in unwanted ways, light scattering is basically non-existent here. A good prism is able to transmit as much light as a mirror, if not more. And since a prism doesn't need a reflective coating that can oxidize and degrade over time, it should also perform well for a considerably longer amount of time compared to mirrors. There is however a small downside to prism diagonals. They tend to produce chromatic aberrations in shorter focal length telescopes. So if you own a refractor with a focal length shorter than 700 mm, for example, I would stick to mirror diagonals. Prism diagonals also cost more than traditional mirror diagonals. This is also something to keep in mind. Since my use case involves a Maxwell of Cassegrain telescope, which has a long focal length of uh, 1300 mm, I quickly decided to go with a prism diagonal. And here I chose the one and a quarter inch prism diagonal from Bader Planetarium. I've only heard good things about Bader diagonals in the past and I was very curious about how it would compare to the Skywatcher mirror diagonal that was supplied with a four inch Mac. In short, I wasn't disappointed. I could immediately see an improvement in brightness and contrast when looking at Jupiter, Saturn and the Moon. Also the light scattering was gone and I could enjoy the views without unwanted reflections. The prism inside this diagonal is made out of high quality BAK4 glass which allows for a very high transmission rate. The image itself is just like in the case of the Skywatcher mirror diagonal, vertically oriented correctly, but is flipped horizontally. The housing is completely painted black on the inside to reduce unwanted light reflections even further. Build quality wise, the Bader diagonal is also superior to the Skywatcher diagonal but that was to be expected given its higher price point. At $140 US or 120 euros, the Bader is twice as expensive as the Skywatcher mirror. Not only that the Bader diagonal is completely made out of metal, it uses a clever modular design that allows for maximum flexibility when including it in an existing optical system. This is due to the T2 thread standard used on both threaded ends. This also means that you can screw this diagonal directly to the T2 threaded back end of the telescope, saving a couple of valuable millimeters of optical light path. If you intend on using it with a bino viewer, for example, those couple of millimeters will make the difference when trying to achieve focus. The Bader prism diagonal has a clear aperture of 32 mm, is 64 mm long and weighs 200 grams. It also comes with a very smooth and height adjustable eyepiece socket that lets you secure the eyepiece in place using a very nice ring clamp. 
So the one and a quarter inch prism diagonal from Bader Planetarium is a great piece of equipment that in my case managed to visibly improve the views of the night sky. It manages to outperform the mirror diagonal from Skywatcher that came with my four inch Mac in every category. Even though the butter is much more expensive, in my opinion, it's worth it and it strikes a good balance between the entry level diagonals and the more expensive premium ones. I'm very glad that I got it and I can recommend it to anyone with an SET or Mac telescope. Now that you know my opinion about these diagonals, I'm curious to see what your experiences are with mirror and prism diagonals. Let me know in the comments below. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have questions or feedback, then leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and catch you guys next time.